Hey guys, this is Paul, Inventor 3. My lab's getting a little messy here. Um, so today I want to do some experiments with this barium titanate cylinder. Uh, one of my most prized possessions in my laboratory here. And this is a gift uh, a few years back from John Hutchison. And recently I was inspired by a very long email thread of John Hutchison and the group. I won't mention any names, but a bunch of brilliant minds. Anyhow, um, so yeah, this is very fascinating. There's the measurements. ODID in length, wall thickness. Now you see there's one black wire attached to the outside wall near the top. And that red wire is connected to the inside way at the bottom on the opposite side way at the bottom on the inside but I wanted to show you this well this dark area is probably during John's experiments there but you can see there is like a probably like a lacquer type finish thin layer on there otherwise it almost looks kind of grayish in this area where it's been rubbed off uh, you can see there's many windings of these fibers going around there what they are I don't know they're little tiny hairs my guess would be to say they're carbon fibers whoops going out of focus here what's going on whoops sorry guys <laughs> My guess would be that they're like carbon fibers like you would find uh, in a fishing rod or a golf club. Maybe to add a constant pressure on there. I don't know. A while back I was fortunate enough to find someone on eBay who was selling these. I don't think they're selling them anymore. I think I got a couple of these pieces from on eBay and other ones again from John Hutchison here are some more notes so oh, I got lots of notes on this thing but uh, here's from Tokyo Institute of Technology this is where John Hutchison had uh, the cylinder examined this is dear John hello how are you let's see you are very busy the crystals that you sent me are very interesting. At the 18 kilohertz, I can see an interesting phenomenon. You can see... I've got to try this too. I need a new frequency generator and I'm, I'm working on uh, repairing one of my old vintage ones. Or I'll have to get another one, but anyhow, these... Uh, so I see she has a diode on one side too, oscillator, two wires going across it then, she's showing a waveform. Uh, now I have tested this a couple times in the past when my frequency generator was working. I don't remember if I had that diode on there or not, but this is the results that I had. Okay, uh, let's see here. Oh, there's a photo. Now that was John's, I believe this might be, if I'm not mistaken, I think this is the one he made for Japan. Hiroshima, I could be wrong, but this is one of his free energy devices. You can see there's like uh, six barium titanate cylinders on there. not the best quality photo here. Barium, some old notes here, has a ferroelectric, photorefractive, and piezoelectric effects. Photorefractive effect is a nonlinear optical effect seen in certain crystals and other materials that respond to light by altering their refractive index. 
and then we have furrow electricity is a property of certain materials that have a spontaneous electric polarization that can be reversed by the application of an external electric field and then piezoelectricity or piezo I say piezo, piezo, piezoelectric I should be saying right <laughs> is the electric charge that accumulates in certain solid materials notably crystals certain ceramics and biological matter such as bone DNA and various proteins <coughs> so anyhow guys let's get on with it and uh, we're just gonna do a bunch of real simple quick little experiments today and uh, see what our results are just to get a feel of this thing and what's going on and how it lives and breathes and all that stuff all right before I even hook this meter up to it I do not have it shorted out right now and I left it that way on purpose so let's see because there have been many times this thing could knock you up back on your ass it's amazing how much energy this can store up uh, yeah, the, the wire's exposed right here in the middle. That's all that you're looking at here. Uh, so right now, let's very carefully and easily, I'm going to touch this red wire to the black wire and see if there's a good jolt or not. Boom. Did you see that? I hope you saw it and heard it. Okay, I'm going to be taking notes on every experiment here. It's also, uh, we're in my lab right now. Let's take that to consideration. Uh, I'll be doing some experiments outside yet because we're sort of in a Faraday cage being inside my lab here. Uh, so we're uh, 87 degrees Fahrenheit right now, 38 percent humidity that's in the lab right now where we're doing this experiment it's also 1230 and let's check this hopefully you could see this there's no light glare 0 0.050 now this is DC volts it's not fluctuating much I'm gonna mark 0 0.048 and if you want to check AC yeah that's what I thought so we're just gonna be dealing with DC it's point zero zero three point zero zero two volts let's go back to our DC point oh fifty five fifty four it fluctuates I'll put point oh fifty okay here we are literally about three minutes later and just from applying pressures and that you could see this went to a negative now I was trying to see when I squeezed this by hand slowly applying pressure 0 0.6, 0 0.7 Okay, it steadily climbs with me accordingly with the changing pressure it rises and I do it again I'll go slowly increasing pressure increasing pressure seven eight one let go okay but now watch when I squeeze it quickly huh it goes negative right away. Do you see that? 
We're positive. Let it go down. All right, I'm gonna squeeze it quickly. Squeeze, negative 0.8. Now does that have something to do with my hands? Let's see if I just touch it. No. So I'm not even talking about the pressure as I release it. I'm just talking about applying the pressure. I steadily apply the pressure, it goes up. But if I do it quickly, it goes to a negative there. And then I'm trying to see now if we get the same results with the clamp. Let's see here. I'm going to slowly squeeze it. And that's it. Now it didn't rise nearly as much. Releasing. All right, now I'm going to quickly clamp it. Quick. Oh yeah, it did go to a negative. Release. Ready, and I'm gonna clamp it quickly. One, two, three. Yep, went to a negative. Okay, so it's not just my hands. So far, I'm only seeing, let's see, we're negative right now. We're around zero now. Negative eight. All right, so it's not just my hands. So it's interesting to know, to note, that when the pressure is applied steadily the voltage rises accordingly with the changing pressure but if the pressure is applied quickly the voltage goes to a negative reading and then back okay let me mark that down and we'll be back okay we're back outside again here we got a positive it's all over the place 0 0.24 0 0.1 0 0.190 0 0.2 oh, there comes a little breeze there it goes now it goes to negative negative 250 280 wind is dying down Now it's going up, oh, positive, negative. It's got a mind of its own. I've got both wires out the same, one same end right now. things are fluctuating so much right now it's hard to tell oh it just went negative I don't feel a gust of wind let's try that again no <clears throat> Come on, I'm hoping for another gust of wind here. I was watching it for a little bit before I turned the camera on here. It seems like every time there's a gust of wind, it goes to the negative. But that's right now. It could change. Tomorrow I could check this, and, and maybe every time the wind blows, it goes positive. There's point three. 0.36. I had a strong gust of wind and it went negative 0.450. Oh, 
All right, here comes the wind. Here comes the wind. Negative, negative two. Let me show you what happens if I blow on it. Watch our readings. It's my big fat head in the way. <laughs> Negative 400, 600. Now, I've had this out in the rain before, too. I was testing it. Uh, I did not get that on video. Actually, I might have a clip of it. I don't know. I'll have to check. But anyhow, in the rain, constant rain, the pressure of the raindrops and windy, it was uh, pretty much a constant, uh, well, it fluctuated again, but it was mainly around the average of uh, 0.400 or 400 millivolts I should say okay guys we're <clears throat> back inside the lab uh, as you can see we now have positive uh, 125 millivolts uh, I have the cylinder laying horizontal again on our wooden block I've got a a powerful neodymium magnet here. I used uh, it's actually got a little chip on the corner there, uh, three quarter inch square. Um, I used my magnetometer to make sure so of what end is what. So this is the north end, and we're gonna put it aiming towards the red wire now let's watch our meter here and see if anything changes no alright let's take this magnet and flip it so the south end is now facing the red wire No. Alright, let's do the negative end towards the black wire. How about the south end? nothing okay so we're back what do we got going on here all right let's turn our meter on okay DC voltage where are we we're a positive 0 0.023 uh, there's our meter probes connected to each end of the cylinder here our red and black wires and over here we have a small coil connected to our power supply so that's our uh, red wire that you see taped over here going to one end and the black wire coming up over here and it's hard to see these little thin wires probably on the video but so each end of that coil is connected to our power supply here so this is just a low voltage DC power supply. I'm going to start with like 3 volts. And the thing is to let's watch our meter and see if what happens. Uh, let's see if it reverses polarity for one thing. All right. Power on. Okay, I see nothing. Let's uh, turn that coil around. I see nothing. 
And let's put the coil at this end. Nothing. Nothing. I'm creating an electromagnetic field. Yeah, it's still an electric field. I'm creating an electric field. Um, well, let's uh, increase the voltage here. Nothing. Turn it around. Increase the voltage. Nothing. Alright, so let's try this again here. Very low voltage. I got the coil squeezed a little bit there. Stick it right inside. Well, now I'm pressing that. Squeeze that a little more. There we go. Hmm. All right. So we're going to bring the cylinder and our multimeter up on the roof. Okay, up on our roof here. Here we tightening, we got it connected. Uh, can you see that? Point. Point three. Whoa, just dropped. That didn't do anything. I just went to a negative. Back positive. Huh. It's still sitting in the sun. But all right, all right, next. Let's see our pole here. And there's our collector box. This is actually the end of our antenna wire. So I'm gonna disconnect this. And connect that to one of these wires. We'll be right back. Okay, we're back inside the lab. The barium titanate cylinder is connected at the top of the antenna. We have our circuit on there. Uh, we had approximately 8.7 volts DC. Point four, eight point five. So pretty much no difference. Okay. Different day today. Hot sunny day. Uh, this is just a cardboard box on a small table in the yard here. And the cylinder sitting inside of the cardboard box and so is my meter. Uh, but you can see we got over one volt 
Now, 1.1 volt, 1.7. Uh, it's all right, I gotta see what'll happen if we put the cylinder on my roof. So, yeah, let me get this camera out of the stand here. Um, yeah, here you go. You can see what I've got now. Okay. Oh, wow. It's dropping quick there all of a sudden. Oh, back up. Why? Because I leaned in at it. Whoa back away <laughs> over one volt let's lean in and look at it whoa I am still a good foot one foot away my shadow that's what that is okay <laughs> point two volts <laughs> ah, it likes the radiation it says Sun I want the Sun 